Ravi Baldev Singh, I'm the Senior Director for Pre-Sales at uh, Comvote. What do you feel are the biggest risks that you're talking about at the moment with uh, the concerns that you're hearing from your customers in the data center space? It's an interesting question because when it uh, boils down to cyber resilience, cyber security and n number of things the chief information security officers are dealing with, it has to do with how do we secure our, as a customer, our data capital landscape how do we make sure the bad actors are kept at bay? And how do we proceed, proceed as, a, as an IT organization, as an enablers of the business, as if we already have been breached? So embracing the breach and making sure we rally all our troops as an organization, hopefully as a customer of Commvault, uh, in a way that we are able to relaunch ourselves within our so-called survival time objective. That's front and center for the board level, for the sea level, and primarily for the CEO as well. When you're talking about the different type of risks in today's environment, of course, there's, we're in this we're in this hugely accelerated environment um, of AI of the AI world. We've also got quantum computing now being spoken about more and more, which is posing a different kind of threat. Um, what do you see as different risks in today's world? So, AI and AI is a discussion in itself. There's artificial. Uh, general intelligence, there is a SI, which is artificial specific intelligence, then there is content creation, Gen AI, and then there is just plain and simple machine learning. So it's important for customers to understand that the exabytes of data collectively they have in the industries, and that's just me lowballing a number, uh, needs to be curated, processed, and then made relevant for the business where insights could be really cleaned for proper and automated decision making, that's AI. It also means the bad actors are using AI to find out vulnerabilities within the tech stack that customers actually host. And we as good actors need to get it right every single time. The bad actors need to get it right just once. And that means we got to fight AI with AI. And that's what we bring as Commvault, or we intend to bring as Commvault, as part of our core offering, on-premise, in the data center, as well as in the cloud. Now, a quick pivot into quantum computing, right? That moves away from the deterministic nature of computing, where the zeros and ones are in a specific format, and you know what output you're going to get. But in the world of quantum computing, it's probabilistic. So Zainab is here, but she's not really here. She's in Dublin as well. I could be here or there at the yeah. same time. Yeah. <laughs> and you are everywhere but nowhere. Imagine that. That's the world of quantum computing. From a perspective of cyber security and its impact on resilience, it means quantum computers now and in future would, would be able to compromise the encryption stack. So all the encrypted data would be available to bad actors and rogue state actors. They would be able to decrypt any conversation, decrypt any file, any database, and glean information against all privacy rulings. That's the world we are in now. If quantum computing becomes a negative issue, just like AI in the hands of uh, the bad actors. Now, that also means we as a software innovator need to take that into account and make sure we are at the forefront. We have an ecosystem of partners who are doing a lot of research in the area of quantum computing. So tomorrow, if there are quantum resistant cryptographic technologies, we would be, I would guess, one of the first to help customers adopt them quickly, efficiently, and with resilience on premise and as well as in the cloud. So how in this new climate, thank you, um, can customers really feel safe? The customers need to really look at one and only one core objective. Embrace the breach. Imagine you've been compromised. Think like Phoenix, you gotta rise from the ashes. So who am I? What makes me unique as a business? What is my minimum viable tech stack or MVO, minimum viable organization that I must relaunch within my survival time objective? If these two questions are answered correctly by the business owners, then the system owners, the data custodians can do whatever they need to do to line up the ducks in a row and get recovery and relaunch convexity back on the table for decision makers. So customers really care about two things. In my humble learning over the last 27 years journey in the region, reflexivity of tech operations where we are able to respond quickly and 
convexity of returns. It really means, and this is the CFO speak here, I want to define my downside, but I want to have my upside completely uncapped, if that makes sense. So I am downside protected, but my upside returns are asymmetric. That's exactly what CISOs are looking for. I know what I'm about to lose because of a cyber attack or a situation, let's say, but my upside potential is unlimited. I am able to recover quickly, frequently, with resilience and everyone having muscle memory of having done so n number of times. In constructs such as the clean room, we provide as Commvault for many of our customers. Where well, you are welcome in, you test your theories, you prove the veracity of your claim that you are ready, when in fact you were not, and it gives you a score of how well you performed. So you can get better at it. Do you mean that these clean rooms are kind of, you go in and you get hacked essentially, or you try to get attacked and you see like that? So a clean room, and that's a very good question, Zainab. If you have to practice cyber resilience, you have to make sure you perfect cyber recovery. And that means I must recover my core banking stack, my branch automation applications, if I were a bank. If I'm a telco, I must recover my billing, my customer relationship management, my payment gateways, my uh, mediation systems, and things that make me who I am. If I'm an online retailer, my inventory system, my ERP, and so on and so forth, right? Um, so organizations need to have teams. I like to call them the blue teams, the goalkeepers in a football match. And then there are red teams who are responsible for creating a breach-like scenario, trying to penetrate in and exposing the vulnerabilities in a controlled manner. The blue teams need to be empowered because the best tech out there, the best networking, the best firewalls, they're not built for relaunching organizations. And I'll default my answer to the five pillars of framework, such as the NIST cybersecurity framework, since this is a, a podcast about resilience and security. Identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. And I ask CISOs this question in every engagement. What's that one control that you would rely on when every other security control stands defeated? And they say, recover control. And the recovery is to be done by the administrators. So there is a dichotomy right there. The good actors on the cyber security front are protecting the boundaries, the borders, and the good actors on the backup recovery front are operating in their own stovepipe approach. And the two mostly aren't talking to each other. The clean room brings everything together. Where you come in, you claim that I can do a recovery. Well, show it to me how fast you're able to. You claim that I have a golden copy, quote unquote. Well, this copy seems to be infected. You failed your recovery, let's try again. Let's go back to a previous checkpoint and so on and so forth. So the clean room helps get better at cyber drills. A clean room helps organizations prove that resilience is not just a talk or an A4 sheet of paper with instructions. People have actually done it. Clean room sounds like something we all need in our lives to like practice before we um, prepare things. Today, and wish you the best for today. Thank you, sir. Thank you.